Hey everyone, welcome back to season number two of The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 51. 51, Brian Campbell. Soupy. <laughs> That's true. Boo. That's not me booing, this. the boobers. Yeah, right, right. The and boobers. then uh, Radim Shimmick. There you go. Who nobody will boo. Well, that's a guy I'm looking forward to having come back for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, this episode, we'll be talking about free agency, actually. Yeah, we'll talk about the Prospects game. Uh, Paul was fortunate to go and interview some of the guys and, and Roy Summer as well. Yeah, so that was uh, a really awesome experience, and we'll share that with you guys, uh, at least the audio of it, uh, yeah. later on in the show. So, you ready to start the show? Fire Doug Wilson. All right, let me explain the fire, Doug Wilson. Brutal. That was a, that was a joke. Wow. That was a joke. Sarcasm. <laughs> There's a lot of people on the internets, the interwebs, that are uh, asking for his head, obviously. It happens every year. <laughs> uh, last year, if you remember, we were trying to sign Tavares and did not. And uh, a while later, ended up trading for Carlson, which we agree is a better deal anyway right. than having Tavares. Yeah. So... Um, the the same people come out of the woodwork and say fire Doug Wilson. It's like really, the team just finished third ever <laughs> or overall in the league last season. Yeah, when they, yeah, whatever. So, just the trolls. Is the what trolls. it is, you know. And it's funny because you'll get that uh, that same fire Doug Wilson in uh, free agency, and you'll get him in the beginning of the season, and at the trade deadline, and you'll get it at the <laughs> end of the season, and at playoffs, and, and uh, da, 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 da. I can see <laughs> why Doug Wilson does not go on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Totally understandable. So, um, what we are going to talk about, though, some of the stuff that happened in free agency. Obviously, mm-hmm. the biggest thing that happened in free agency so far for the Sharks was not for the Sharks. It was uh, Captain Joe Pavelski um, moving on, we'll say, into uh, to, to Dallas. Right. So, um, he's getting a pretty good contract over there. Three years, $7 million a year. So, $21 million for uh, the former captain of the San Jose Sharks. Uh, 34 years old, so this is his last big contract. Uh, it sure makes a whole lot of sense to me why he would go and do that. Now, it sounded like the uh, the problem was term, and it. some people on Twitter and everything else say, no, the problem was money. Well, I think the problem was term. Um, so they, sure the they were going to give him, yeah, right? they were going to give him two years, reportedly two years in somewhere between five and six million, and then he ended up going for three years and seven million. Well, either way you cut it, that's, you know, 11, nine, 11 million dollars right. that he would be guaranteed, and he'd be walking away from if you were to sign him with the Sharks. Also note that the Sharks only have a little over $6 million in cap space right now. We still have to sign LeBanc. We have to sign, well, we've only got nine forwards signed as it is without LeBanc. So then after you sign him, you still need to sign at least two, probably three more forwards. Uh, you can't do that if you give Joe Pavelski uh, $7 million, first of all, because you're over cap. Mm-hmm. You can't do that really if you give Joe Pavelski 5 or $6 million because, again, you're so close to the cap as it is. And you got to send a couple other guys. It just wouldn't have worked out, guys. So, um, you know, it was a smart move by Doug Wilson to sign Eric Carlson. And I don't think that has anything to do with the reason that they can't sign Pavelski. Look, that's just the way the numbers shook out. And I think you need to go after the the solid young talent on the blue line that is Eric Carlson. I think to let him walk away is would be kind of ludicrous, in my opinion. Um, so, I don't know. I, I, I'm okay with it. It sucks seeing the captain go. But, you know, given the opportunities and the uh, everything that was on the table there, it just made the most sense. Um, Pav's moving on, so. Yeah, and I think I think uh, signing Eric Carlson did have a, a, a lot to do with sure. this because the money just wasn't there, cap space-wise. Uh, taking away $11.5 million off of the, the potential cap, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so I think that had a, a little bit to do with it. And we had been talking about this for months now. Like, if Pavelski was going to come back, it's going to come down to if they signed Carlson or not. Mm-hmm. Um, who knows, maybe the Sharks still would have only given him two years, maybe $7 million. Yeah. Um, maybe he would have stayed, maybe not. Maybe he was looking for that third year. And as we pointed out, I think during the live um, earlier, was that uh, it, in two years, there's going to be the draft for Seattle. Mm-hmm. And if you give him a three-year contract with the no movement clause, you have to you have to protect him. So I think the Sharks, that probably has to do with it a little yeah. bit right there, too. Um, if you go back and look at the Marlowe, when Patrick Marlowe left the Sharks to go to Toronto, the Sharks didn't want to give him a three-year deal because he was already over 35. And when you're over 35 and you sign a contract in the NHL, you're, you're on the hook for that, uh, regardless if they retire or they get injured. Well, maybe not long-term injury, but mm-hmm. um, it's still going to hit you in the cap space. So what happened to Toronto this year, the third year of that Marlowe deal of $6 million, they ended up trading him to... What was it Carolina? Carolina. And Carolina buyout. was trying to convince him to play, mm-hmm. and he said no. 
no thanks. He only wants to play one place, which is San Jose. Mm-hmm. So they bought him out, and now that $6 million is going to be on Carolina's books for this year no matter what. Um, normally, I think it gets a little reduced if you buy out a player or something, but over the th- when they're over 35, you can't. So they're going to get hit with that cap space, which they knew was going to happen. And that was kind of, if you look at it, they got a first-round pick yeah. from Toronto out of it. So that's the cost of a first-round pick, about $6 bucks. There you go. Um, so now we might see Patrick Marlowe coming to the Sharks, signing a cheap one-year deal, yeah. I would think. Him and Jumbo, who knows? But that's that's getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll, we'll get towards that. Right. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, for now, it, it absolutely makes sense why, you know, again, if they were going to offer Pabs two years, then okay, that makes sense. A third year, though, like you said, in Seattle, if they're going to have to protect a guy who's, what, 36 years old at that some point in time, mm-hmm. I'd rather protect one of the younger guns, right? Exactly. So it just didn't make sense. Um, I, I think, I, I don't blame Pavelski. A lot of people are kind of a... They're both upset at Pavelski, and then there's another camp that's upset at the Sharks for yeah. not signing him and letting him walk. I, and it, the, another one in the live, someone was was surprised at how fast it happened that, yeah. that Pavelski signed so quickly. But the way that they restructure things in the NHL is you're allowed to speak with teams before July 1st a full week in advance. Mm-hmm. Before you had to wait until July 1st, so you didn't really see a lot of signings on the day of. You, it it kind of got spread out a little bit more. But now that you can talk to them and kind of get a handshake deal in a way, uh, you know it's coming, and you're just signing the paperwork and, and turning it into the league to make it official at that yeah. point on July 1st. So we saw a lot of signings on July 1st, yeah. new people switching teams, Pavelski being one of them. Yeah. So he already knew. He met with Dallas, and he met with Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay was kind of a long shot. They'd have to move some more pieces to get him in there. Um, I think Dallas is a great spot for him because he's from Wisconsin and goes back a lot, and I wouldn't be surprised if he still resides in San Jose during the summer. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. So uh, he could. Be, it's kind of a halfway point in between the two. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, you hear a lot of, of people on like Twitter and whatnot saying Pavs was, you know, chasing money and the greed thing and everything. I just don't buy that. He just doesn't seem to be that type of a guy. Um, I think he would love love to play in San Jose. I think his words were true. You know what he had said. He, he would love to stay. He would love to play. You know, for for the Sharks again. Mm-hmm. But you know, just the way it shakes out, it just doesn't doesn't work that way. It's the 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 problem of playing in a in a hard cap league like that. So, um, I mean, and and again, people blaming you know the Eric Carlson contract and Doug Wilson for him not coming back. Look. You know, it, I, again, in my opinion, it, Doug Wilson knows if he signs Eric Carlson, he already knows he's not signing Joe Pavelski. It's not like he signed Eric Carlson and then went, "Oh gosh, I forgot, I got to yeah. sign Joe." Right? Yeah. It, that's not how it happened, right? So he was made a conscious decision to pick one over the other. And I, I think if he would have been able to make a couple of trades and make it work for Joe, then great. But again, if Joe's starting point was three years, right, just was never going to work out. So. Um, you know, to to the captain. You know, uh, for all the great seasons that we've had. Um, I mean, the, the great playoff runs. You know, this last one especially. Um, it's been an honor being able to watch you, and especially in this last season, being able to go to the practices and see you going out there with Bernsey and Tiffin Pucks. And I'm wondering what Bernsey's going to do now because his yeah. his, his uh, you know practice routine is kind of thrown a little bit now because uh, so that's what they did. Over that role, gonna have think? to. Yeah, gonna I have to. I bet it's Timo or, Timo? or Hurdle. I mean, yeah. I think it'll take a while to get that tipping down. But oh, yeah. It, it, the strategy is definitely going to change for the Sharks in for terms sure. of, uh, especially in the power play. Yeah, I think those wristers are not going to be aimed for uh, a stick to be tipped. I think those mm-hmm. wristers are going to be hitting more net, looking for more rebounds. I think you're probably going to see more people screening. Or we see Bernsey going into the Ovechkin in office. Or that. That would be nice, it all too. up. <laughs> so uh, another player that uh, went out. Jonas Donskoy went to the Colorado Avalanche. I believe he had a four-year, $3.9 million per year yeah. contract. That's a great deal for him. That's a phenomenal deal for him, but uh, Colorado, I don't know what you guys are doing there. That seems like a huge overpayment to me. Well, they got the cap space. Sure. So Donskoy's a good um, He's a good guy that can go between the second and third line, and if you really need to in the top line for um, any injuries. or, mm-hmm. or and he can, I think he can play both wings, too. So he's a pretty versatile player. So it's good for him. It's good for Don Skoy. I think Colorado is going to be a scary team. We kind of talked about yeah. this in the live as well. As one of the top, one of the not top teams, but one of the teams that got better in the West. Yeah, yeah. One of the, one of the teams mm-hmm. that definitely took a big step up. So um, Don Skoy is joining a very good and a very young team. Uh, they're going to be dangerous for a long time. So good for him. We think he was a little bit overpaid. Um, I think if you look at his. This is kind of like when you look at the player and you look at um, advanced stats. The mm-hmm. advanced stats kind of went out here. So he got paid, I think, based on his advanced stats. Now, we've seen him. He's a very good puck possession player. 
Um, but we also saw him not score a goal in yeah. how many games? Yeah. 30, 40, <laughs> something like that? 39, I think, is what it was. Yeah, yeah. so he's you're going to see some dry spells from him. But um, great player. Yeah. Great guy. Great player, yes. great guy. I will yeah. say that. At all the practices, for anybody who's uh, watching who's a Colorado Avalanche fan, I know we have at least one. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, uh, he Donskoy is a, just a great guy um, at practices and whatnot. He'll come over and he'll... He'll meet the fans, he'll shake their hands, talk to them. He'll probably throw you a stick once in a while. It's, we saw uh, Super Key Grip Joe uh, got one of those. It was actually me who got it, but it was for him. So um, really nice guy, and you know his English is pretty good. It's good enough, at least. You know mm-hmm. He talks with the kids and everything, so he's a lot of fun. Um, really silky mitts. His edge work, he always worked on his edge work. It's one thing I'll remember about him is uh, at every practice, before and after, he would always be out there working on his edges, and a lot of times where he'd be on just one skate, just kind of weaving back and forth. Yeah. Um, works on that stuff really really hard so he does put the time in it's just that you're not going to see the results get to the back of the net uh, as often as I think you would like but I think he's going to be a really good setup man for a really young and talented Colorado team Mm -hmm. a great acquisition I just look at that contract and I just kind of scratch my head a little bit like you know honestly if it was 3.9 for like two years or something like that okay maybe but when you're talking about four years for a guy who had a dry spell of 30 something games without a goal yeah to me and I hate to say it but to me in that third fourth year that's like buyout material you know what I mean they could be get, they could get a lot better they can sign those guys and to bigger contracts buy out only because it's Hear me not out. that high of a price Hear, it's not that high of a price that's why yeah. they might buy out to, to get a little bit right so I think that if they had some of those guys that they're going to re-up in their contracts, I'm not sure what Colorado situation is. If they decide they want to load up and get a little bit heavier in terms of offensive firepower or defensive firepower or a better goaltender or whatever it is that Colorado needs, if they need to buy anybody out, that's a contract that I'm looking at. If he's not producing and he doesn't get his game back, that's a guy that I'd be looking at. So again, I wish Jonas Donskoy all the best in Colorado. And again, Colorado, you're getting a great player. Uh, he just... I don't know. In that third or fourth year, I'd, I'd look out. If you guys are in the cap crunch, he might be a guy that gets let go if if he's not uh, if he's not showing up to play, like we saw in the last half of the season for the San Jose Sharks. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, again, good solid player. You guys, uh, I'm sure you'll do well with yeah, him. So. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another player that is on the way or, or is out is uh, Gus Nyquist. Mm-hmm. That's a guy who I, he just didn't seem to. Not that he didn't fit on the team. I thought he did great on the team after the trade. But uh, one that we didn't think was going to come back again because of cap space issues, mm-hmm. and he went to Columbus, and he's making five and a half million for four years, which is pretty good. I thought he would have gotten closer to six, so five and a half is a pretty good deal, yeah. I think, for Columbus. Uh, Nyquist is another good player who's going into Columbus that lost a lot of players, so uh, he's going to slot in in the top six. He's going to get that him. ice time, so he's going to get a lot yeah. of ice time. He might even be on the top line, mm-hmm. um, and I forgot who else was going in to Columbus. That they signed somebody else. But don't know. Don't care. Yeah, <laughs> but they got they have a lot of young players yeah. that are expected to get more ice time now with all Duchesne, Dzingel, uh Panarin, Bobrovsky gone. Yeah, all <laughs> yeah. left. Uh, so Columbus is going to look a lot different this year yep. compared to what they were. And I, I hate I, I again I don't like to be the doom and gloom. I just talked about <laughs> Donskoy being a buyout prospect in the first. But um, I did say last season Columbus if they don't win the cup this season. Uh, they are, or last season rather, uh, they are going to be a hot garbage dumpster fire. I don't think they'll be that. I bad. think they're going to be terrible. I think they'll still make playoffs. You do? Yeah, I think wow. they'll be on the bubble. I okay. think they'll be a, they're a bubble playoff. I, I honestly, because I, I look at all the names that left that team, and then you look at um, who is it that got? Oh, Pavelski was supposed to get an invite to go check out Columbus, and he goes, "No thanks." Yeah, he didn't even go to take a look. They invited like, him to a meeting to discuss joining the team and he's like nah I don't I, yeah I don't think Columbus is a destination for anybody I don't think that they, they, that was they traded the, away all their picks to get those guys Panarin. Panarin did not want to be in yeah. Columbus anymore Panarin Bobrovsky right there and then right. you know uh, yeah I just don't think that Columbus has anything going for them right now unfortunately for that franchise because um, it's supposed to be like America's team or whatever right but you know they, they've got all their high level guys basically have gone they don't have anything really prospect wise because they traded away all these picks mm-hmm. and they can't attract players. So Nyquist signed there, great, but I don't know. I just don't see anything really good happening in Columbus and, I, and anything happening not even just this season, but for a couple seasons to come if they don't have, get their prospect pool stocked up. So we'll see where that goes. But it's interesting about Nyquist signing there is it's pretty close to Detroit. Okay. So I don't know if he still has a home in Detroit. He might, and it's pretty close to home. Okay. 
that he probably got paid pretty well. I mean, he got paid pretty well. So, uh, and I don't know how many other teams offered him sure a contract, right? Mm-hmm. So, to me, it makes sense that he would go to Columbus because it's not that far. Do you feel that the Sharks could have maybe given him a deal? that was maybe a little bit less than that that he may have taken maybe maybe they offered him something smaller and he just said no yeah I kind of felt like if we didn't get Joe Pavelski there was a chance that we could sign both Carlson and Nyquist right and I mean given yeah 5.5 million if we only have currently right now 6.3 or 6.4 maybe if the cap was a little bit higher yeah if there's expected 83 million instead of the 81 and a half maybe Mm -hmm. Uh, but we still have to sign LeBanc at this point exactly and I thought Timo Meyer's contract at 6 million was a little higher than what I thought it was going to be yeah I was I was thinking less term and maybe 4 million 5 million dollars okay but I'm no GM so (laughs) I don't know the going price of certain players. That is true. Okay, so moving on from players that have gone and jumping into players that have uh, come back, returned. Like Timo. Like Timo. Right. There you go. Perfect segue. Let uh, it go. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I, I, th- I still think it's a good contract. Yeah. In fact, at the end of this contract, he will still be a restricted free agent, mm-hmm. right? So uh, they will still retain the rights to him. It's almost a bridge deal. I guess you can call it a bridge deal. I don't know, but six million dollars is that really a bridge deal? <laughs> I think about it; it's kind of like the Tomash Hurdle deal. Yeah, right. Uh, I forgot what he's making. He's a little bit over more. Five point two six five five point six two. I thought it was six point something. No, Tomash is it starts at five million. I believe. Okay, yeah. But Hurdle had just like Meyer mm-hmm. potential, right? He kind of got derailed with injuries, so it kind of delayed him a little bit. We saw Hurdle dominant this oh, yeah. entire season, this last ten, entire season. So um, it ended up working in the Sharks' favor. I think the Sharks are kind of banking on that, that they see Timo Meyer as a player that's going to be the future of the Sharks and a dominant power forward, uh, definite top six, top top line kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think they're, they're banking on the fact that signing him to a four-year deal, they're going to get a good value out of him. Are they... LeBanking on the fact? No, I'm talking about team. I know, I'm kidding. Come on, man. It's a dad joke. Wow. It's okay. <laughs> Season two. <laughs> Season two, baby. Season two is going to be we, nothing but dad we jokes. We in it. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, no, I, honestly, I, I mean, here's what here's why I wouldn't call it a bridge deal, because I think once you get to the four year, that to me is no longer a bridge. You're not bridging a gap. You're giving a guy a contract, right? Kind of the same thing with Nyquist. I wouldn't consider Nyquist a, a bridge deal. But Aaron did bring up a good point as to why he still feels it's a bridge deal. He ends up being an RFA, so he's still a property of the Sharks. Now we can talk, and you're still, you know, still property, right? That's so gonna be the big contract. Yeah, it's setting it up to be the big contract. Exactly. So the Sharks are banking on the fact that he's gonna get better and he's gonna get paid, or maybe Timo was like, okay, I want to, you know, I don't want to do a five or six or seven year deal because right. I, in four years I think I'm gonna be making way more money, Nine or I should be making way <laughs> yeah, more sure. money, right? Yeah. I, I should be making. Uh, the Kane and, and Couture yeah. money, yeah. right, and Burns. So um, that's that's kind of the gamble in a way of for both the player side and and the the team side yeah. of signing a contract like that. And comparing it to Hurdle, I think that the the team Doug Wilson, I think, won the gamble on that one because we're seeing Hurdle really being the player that we all thought he was going to be, mm-hmm. and we're only paying him five point six. I think he's definitely worth more. He's worth Kane money for sure, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, sometimes and when you're the, the GM, you win some, you lose some. And I think this that was definitely a win for him was picking up her at that price. And Timo, I think for four years at, at $6 million, I think it's in year value. three and year four, that's going to look like a super bargain. Just like Hurdle. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Uh, now we're just kind of, that was a, the first domino, I guess. Carlson's probably the first domino. Yeah. Then Timo. Now we're probably going to see LeBanc get signed pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, hopefully pretty soon. So at least it's done deal, not lingering into training camp or anything. Yeah. But um, LeBanc's kind of the same thing. He's a younger guy, and they're not going to want to give him a huge contract. He's not going to want a huge contract. Probably going to be probably the three, three-year deal. Yeah. Three to four years. Who knows? I don't really know everything structurally wise but yeah I, w- I would say a three-year deal we were guessing somewhere in like the three million dollar range or two and a half or so range for him yeah i mean I, he does like you said he's the guy that's on the power play you know first line power play and he's you know considered elite by coach pete DeBoer there so but he did have a rough first half of the season that's true he had a much better second half but no first, no penalty killing no defensive responsibility really still a third right. line guy but he's still taking some penalties that he shouldn't be taking that's good yeah. and i think uh, his defensive work needs a little bit more work he's mm-hmm. did a lot better right uh, but he needs to improve that more to get that 
paycheck. Yeah. So I think uh, that's probably what the Sharks are going to be throwing at him. Um, this year, he's probably going to see more top six minutes than he did last year. Uh, and that's just a numbers game at this point yeah. because the winger, they need more wingers. So um, I think I think about a three-year deal. That would be considered more of a bridge deal, yeah. I think, for him. No, I agree with you on that one. So um, we're waiting for LeBanc. That's the next domino to fall. I think after that, uh, well, actually, we'll, we'll jump backwards a little bit. Um, guys that already have signed. Uh, Tim Heed signed a very team-friendly $960,000 uh, one year contract mm -hmm. um, a, a great signing in my opinion I would have loved to see that guy get signed for two years of the same amount because if he does well enough this season playing alongside of Vlasic right. or something like that he's probably going to want to get a little bit of a bump and I'd rather again sign that, for the longer term for the less money mm -hmm. possible and but. lucky for him the Sharks traded Justin Braun that opened up a spot and there you go. a right handed shot right there so Tim Heed was the next in line for a right handed yep. shot so good for Justin Braun to get traded away so he can get some more ice time mm -hmm. he went to Philadelphia yes correct? Philly so he's going to be probably top four there, whereas he was at the bottom yeah. pairing yeah. in San Jose. Um, so he'll get some more ice time. Good for him. Uh, the Sharks got a couple picks out of the deal. Yeah. So good for the Sharks. I think it was just it was good overall to kind of move the pipeline along. You know, for a team that didn't have any second round picks going into the draft, and, and then Doug Wilson comes out with two. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's again for me. I, I don't get the hate for Doug Wilson. I think he does a phenomenal job. So. Agreed. Uh, that and we've got so so Tim Heed, right? Right. Uh, another defenseman signed Dalton Prout, who is kind of more of the bruiser type. Again, a one year deal. 800,000. We'll talk a little bit more later on about the one-year deals because I think there's something specific going on there. For me, at least, Aaron might disagree, but we'll see. Uh, 800,000 for one year, Dalton Proud. He's a very defensively uh, minded, I guess, defenseman. Um, he's the stay bruiser, right? He's the, he's the stay-at-home. He's actually the face puncher as well. So he's that guy that'll go on there kinda and like kind of replace... another Brendan Dillon? Yeah, actually. Maybe a little bit less skilled, but yeah, um, yeah he's kind of the, another guy that's going to be on the blue line that's ready to, to stand up for his teammates. So what do you mean like Jake Middleton's kind of like that? Right? Isn't okay. he like a bigger guy? He's a big guy. I don't know that he's the the face puncher. I think he's a little okay. more skilled. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it'll be nice to have Dalton there um, mm -hmm. for instances where we need a guy like that. So uh, that again, be, cheap though. So and that could be a rotation of um, some of the guys. Yeah. And the, and the bottom pair. Oh yeah, totally. Moving around like he might he might not be playing eighty two games. He might right. be playing twenty, thirty, forty. But um, a couple of those guys, and I think that's what's going to happen this year with our wingers too, yeah. and and a lot of the forwards that we have because we have not a lot of cap space to fill it with, right. with superstar NHL players yeah. like Gus Nyquist. No, you're going to rotate in your guys like uh, True and Schmelievsky and Chikovich and mm -hmm. um, there's a couple other guys from Dylan that prospect Gambrill. camp. Yeah, well, uh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, and so the the defensemen, those guys, I've done it out of the way. We talked a little about LeBanc, and we're waiting for that domino to fall now because we think that after that we're going to see the signings of Jumbo Joe Thornton and Patty Marlowe. Patrick Marlowe. I think we're going to see Patrick Marlowe return. I do too. I don't see why not, especially if he's going to be signing at the minimum deal. Yeah. If you can get both Patty and Jumbo at the minimum deals, uh, that's a pretty killer third line there. Yeah. I'm sure, they're forty. But so what? I'm on board. <laughs> that, I think any team would take any one of those two guys yeah. on their team for a minimum deal. Yeah. So um, I think the Sharks' third line is going to be good. Hopefully they can stay healthy. Marlowe is yeah. all knock on wood. <laughs> he hasn't missed a game in, I think, four or five seasons. He's got an iron streak going. amazing. Yeah. It's incredible. At four, was he 39? I don't know when his birthday is, but it's got to be this yeah. season. He's going to yeah. be turning 40, and he hasn't missed a game in the last four or five years. I mean, that's good value for Toronto. Yeah. Sure, they signed a stupid three-year deal, but they got him for 164 games plus playoffs. That's true, actually. That's yeah. incredible yeah. for someone that age. No, that's a good point. I love yeah. that. Um, you know, the other thing with them is that, again, if they sign these uh, team-friendly deals, this is something that, you know, we're, we're crunched on cap right now, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can get guys that are NHL veterans and that are still... I mean, relevant in the game today, which I think Joe and Patty are, right? They may, they're not the top of their game and they're not going to be running around with the younger, faster crowd, no. But at the same time, if you only have so much cap to deal with and you can get guys like this on your team and it's not costing you a whole heck of a lot, to me, that makes a whole heck of a lot of sense. Yes, absolutely, I'll take Joe and I'll take Patty. And it has nothing to do with the nostalgia factor. I think a lot of people are saying, why would you go after Patrick Marlowe just because he used to be a shark? Let it go, right? You know, honestly, take the name away and just give me an NHL veteran 
who wants to play in San Jose, who's willing to play for a million dollars a season, exactly. whatever it is. Yeah, I'll take him on the team because we need to fill some. We need warm bodies, folks. Right? We need. We, we have <laughs> nine we, forwards signed right now. Right. We don't have LeBanc signed. Once we get him on there, you still need two more. Jumbo, Patty. To me, it's the value. Yeah. If he signs at a minimum, I wouldn't want to sign him for more than that. No. How about that? Absolutely not. If, I would not want that yeah. six million dollar contract. So the fact that he got bought out, it, it to me it makes sense to sign him. Yeah. I love Patty. I, he's he's a consistent player. You know what you're going to get. You're not going to get a ninety point player. You're getting a, probably at this point, I'd say a forty to fifty point player sure. on your third line. That's still pretty good. Yeah. If he could chip in about twenty goals in the season and get in the playoffs and and Another third line, yeah. right? Him and Thornton, and they're, they're chipping in a point every other game. That's pretty good for yeah. a third line. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Yeah, no. As Patrick Marlowe. No. <laughs> He's fantastic. It's Mr. Shark. No, no problems here with that. <laughs> now, I get the crowd saying, you know, hey, how about the getting the younger guys some more experience instead of bringing Patrick Marlowe in? Yeah, no, cool. I, sure. I get that. But, I mean, what's what's the downside if you put them on waivers? Right. Just put them on waivers. No big deal. You could bring up anybody else if you really needed to. True. Being one of them again, Gambrell is another guy that we need to sign, or we're going to end up signing, right? So, um, and th- like we said, LeBanc, that would be ten. You still need eleven and twelve to field your roster. Then you need to have a guy that's sitting waiting in the press box. So you still need to sign three more guys, right? So if Gambrell is one of them, and then you sign Marlowe and, and Thornton, I there's mean, your your whole roster right there. Then you yeah. can still pull guys from like Brzezinski was another mm-hmm. one that we picked up, right? Um, True Schmelievsky, all those guys, right? So there's there's a My lot of guys is, that we can cycle in. I think we'll sign one guy, kind of like maybe not. I'm not saying Michael Haley, but kind of like a player like that, someone okay. who's going to be on the fourth line that you can scratch half the time, but you have okay. in case there's an injury, and someone who can play those fourth line minutes and be dependable in those yeah. fourth line minutes, yeah. or know their role. You're on the fourth line, right? You're going out there and you're hitting hard mm-hmm. and skating hard and try not to give up any goals. That's pretty yeah. much a fourth line right there. Love it. So, okay, I guess moving on from free agency, I think we talked about everything that was going on, mm-hmm. for the Sharks at least, with free agency. Right. Uh, and by the way, uh, when we do hear more news about the free agency and uh, signing or trade or anything that's happening with the Sharks, we'll do another episode. I think we're going to do it a little bit differently than we did in our first season. <laughs> in our first season, we were just kind of generating content to kind of get used to being in front of the camera and talking with you guys and everything. Uh, this season, obviously, we're a little more, um, I was going to say seasoned, but I keep saying the word <laughs> season. So... Uh, um, I think this this time around what we'll do is we'll kind of give you guys the content when it's more relevant as opposed to just trying to pull out like stories and that kind of stuff to, right. for the camera. So uh, a little bit few, few, fewer and farther in between, I should say. So um, free agency stuff done. So prospect game. I had the uh, awesome opportunity to go and check out the prospect game from the press box. Um, Went and actually talked to some of the players and Coach Roy Summer after the game as well. Got to go down there and, and chat with them and everything. It was a really cool experience being part of like the little media group that they had there. Um, saw Kevin Kerr's and Shalina and everything. Mm-hmm. So uh, actually, I, I got I came up to the fourth floor because they told me to go to the fourth floor and I saw Shalina there and I'm going, hey, um, do do you know where we go? Because I don't know where, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> She's like, yeah, cool, follow me. So it's a good thing I saw her as I've been wandering around and God knows where. So. Uh, but yeah, it, w- it was really cool, great experience. Got to set up there and, like I said, watch the whole game. And I know that I was supposed to really see uh, Ryan Merkley and uh, Mario Ferraro, uh, the two real stud defensemen that were um, that were there and touted in the mm. prospect game there, right? And I and I did see them. Don't get me wrong. I saw Merkley make a really a uh, couple of really nice plays. Sometimes maybe um, trying to get a little too cute with the puck, uh, passing it where he could have shot it, like really like on the doorstep, and then he he passes it off to the side and. Then, Nothing happened. So, um, you know, maybe trying to be a little bit flashy and show what he can do, and it kind of bit him a little bit there. But, um, you know, one guy that I saw that really did stick, stick out to me was, um, I can't remember, I think his number was 98. He's a defenseman for the Arizona State, or ASU. Mm-hmm. Um, Brinson Pashnuk? Is that, <laughs> I, don't know, I hope I'm saying his name right. I need Dan Rizinowski on the show. I think oh, Roy Sommer definitely didn't say it yeah, right. Yeah, he, he got it all wrong, yeah. that's for sure. Uh, he called him Pastor Pastor Nuck. Nuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, and we've we've got a clip of that too, and we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But um, yeah, basically, I got to to chat with him. I got to chat with Roy Summer, so oh, it was cool. So we'll go ahead and we'll roll a little bit. Um, Roy Summer again was very happy with the game. What he saw, there was actually a fight in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gallant fighting. I forget the other guy's name, unfortunately, but uh, there was a, 
brawl and um, it's towards the end of the game. Yeah, right? it was at the end of the game. There was a buzzer, and then uh, then they started going. And yeah, you know, Gallant basically had the guy on the ground. Just, I think it was Bergman. There you go, Bergman. Yeah. Lee, Leon, Leon, Leon Bergman. I don't know. Um, he was just it, the guy was on the ground. He was still hailing him <laughs> down on him. It's kind of strange, but I think it, I saw the clip and it looked like yeah. the refs were kind of confused and what to do. Like, <laughs> what what are you guys doing, your teammates? Like, yeah, they didn't really stop him. Like, I think normal. Yeah, they're not even, they're not even normal. And if NHL refs, they're probably like minor league guys that can yeah, or something, right? Getting some practice in, right? Whatever. So it, they they seemed a little uh, slow to <laughs> stop them from fighting. So it's, well, uh, here's Roy Summer talking a little bit about how he was happy with the game and um, actually a little bit about uh, Brinson as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought was, I thought uh, for the middle of the summer, everyone got treated to a pretty good hockey game. <laughs> Actually, it uh, like they, I thought they had a good pace and made some good plays, some good outlet passes, uh, some good saves. Um, had a fight, <laughs> had to scrape the blood off the ice, had everything. You know, it was pretty well. Uh, I don't think you could have had a better scenario as far as uh, for the fan enjoyment. So yeah, that was uh, Roy. Basically, just really happy with what he saw. I thought it was uh, it was it was a cool game. So uh, not something you see in every prospect game. Pretty cool. Um, you know, we had a hard time, or I had a hard time talking or saying uh, Pashnuk. I think is like Brinson's uh, last name there. Um, I wasn't the only one having a hard time. <laughs> you, you heard him call him Pashternuk or yeah. something, whatever. Uh, Roy's gonna have to learn some of these names. He's got a couple other ones that he botched uh, in that interview as well. You know, I, I thought that you know I thought they were good. Um, you know the how do you say the one guy's name? Spear Donoff. I mean, he was. Uh, you know, I, I didn't really notice him so much in this game tonight as I had uh, the first scrimmage. I thought he really stood out. But you're gonna get that, you know. You know, from young guys, and then the who's the what's the Zaitsev or whatever. Spear Donoff. I can't even say these guys. <laughs> this guy, Netsev or whatever, like. Uh, like like Zaitsev is a totally different person. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, gonna have to learn those, Roy. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah. The uh, the last little clip here that we're gonna play is me actually talking with Brinson Pashnuk. I'm gonna keep saying that name until I get it right. Pashnuk. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's 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 me uh, kind of talking with him a little bit. There was a couple people interviewing him, and I got the opportunity to ask a couple questions. I did ask him who he models his game after, if there was anyone in particular. Yeah, I would say uh, Tory Krug okay. off the Bruins, for sure. I think he's a smaller size D-man, lo- uh, likes the offensive blue line, mm-hmm. um, but really focuses on the defensive side of his game, and that's what I'm trying to do yeah. right now, just work on the defensive side every day. So, I mean, I am I would be very happy with a Tory Krug clone. I mean, I, I was sitting there interviewing the guy, and he wasn't that tall. He was standing right next to his brother. Yeah. Uh, I believe his brother's name is Steen. Okay. S- Steen Pashnuk. <laughs> Um, it's so difficult. Uh, yeah. So, and and his brother was like a full head taller, right? So you you know, so smaller, smaller guy didn't eat their Wheaties. Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> didn't drink their milk. Right. But no, I mean, he he looked like a like a little brick house. Like a, right. he was a little tank. You know, kind of reminds me of like Shimmick, right? You know, mm-hmm. um, a, a lot more skilled. I think um, I saw him make a lot of really good plays, both defensively and offensively. And there's if you kind of just kind of Google search him, maybe you'll, you'll see a couple plays that he had. There was one where I think it was the NCAA tournament, like the first. He got on the board basically, and it was just him basically controlling the puck. You saw the clip too. Oh, well, we could show it right here. Oh, we can. Right? Okay, yeah. there you go. We'll show the clip. Right so you can see him basically. He's walking around the blue line. He's making a couple nice little moves, and um, you know he ends. He looks really confident with the puck there. Mm-hmm. So uh, just one more guy that you know, if he plays well defensively, which in the prospect game he really did. That was the first thing that stood out to me was his defensive play. That's good. And then seeing him taking the puck up because that was a thing to me. I was like, this guy made really good defensive plays, and then all of a sudden he's on a breakaway. You know, so it'll be interesting to see because he's not signed right now. Yeah. So maybe we'll see that in the coming months. The Sharks sign this defenseman and everyone's going to say who is that guy? Yeah. And here he is on our show. Yeah, absolutely. That, <laughs> that'd be so awesome. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I know. I, and again, you know, Sommer gave him the, the accolades as well, said he played a really good game. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, a guy to keep your eyes open for, something that stood out to me, again, in the midst of, you know, Brian Merkley and Mario Ferraro, where you're supposed to notice those two guys, I noticed this guy instead. Mm-hmm. So, um, who knows? Could be another really good prospect for us. That'd be so, good. It'd be, be good great. depth, at least, you know? Yeah. So, all right. Very good. Well, hey, uh, that was basically the show for this week. So uh, we're going to do the jumbo puck thing, though, right? We are. Okay. So you want to hold it oh, up? Yeah, I'll hold show it up. Them what this, 
So we got uh, Paul got this from a Discord Reddit. Discord, uh, dis- the oh, Sharks what? Reddit Discord. A guy in there named uh, Hero H I R O. Thank you again. He donated the puck to the show. I went and got the puck signed by Jumbo Joe Thornton himself, and I said I was going to give the puck away, and I'm sticking to it. So I got it signed. Maybe After we should I agreed wait that, but and get it signed by Marlo on the other side. I was thinking about oh, that. No, we're not <laughs> so gonna do that. Good. We'll just get another puck yeah, sure. again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, the URL is at yeah. the bottom. It's bit.ly slash jumbo jumbo dash puck. puck. Yeah, for all the podcast listeners. <laughs> because um, we can't see what's actually on the bottom of the screen, we have to memorize it. It's right here. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so yeah, uh, follow that link and um, you can enter make of several entries I believe to, uh, to win the Jumbo Joe Thornton signed puck yep. that we're giving away on the show uh, unfortunately it's only in uh, US correct right yes we I already mean, had a fan from Sweden yeah. or from I think it's from Sweden I think it's Sweden it's probably I'm probably wrong but uh, probably Switzerland <laughs> said that they, yeah pro- <laughs> <laughs> said that they would pay for shipping uh, unfortunately we can't do it so yeah uh, it's going to be US residents only uh, yeah, Sorry. you can also visit our store. We still have you can see our shirt up here. We have our swag. If you'd like to support the show, uh, you can go to the link down here. It's www.thefinfactor.com, and uh, we have we still have gray, black, teal, teal. <laughs> shirts. And I got to remember this. Uh, and then we have women's deep V cuts, and we also have hats, and uh, that helps support the show. As well as stickers. And you go ahead and hit those three little buttons at the top and says support the show. That's where our store is. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook at The Fin Factor Mm -hmm. and Instagram at Fin Factor. So that is going to do it for episode number 51, I guess. 51. Season two, the first episode of season two. But we're going to stick with the numbering, 51. That's That's how how we're going to do it. it. And we're going to follow suit because we're not unique, apparently. Thanks, Aaron. Right. Okay, so that is it for episode number 51. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we will see you next week or two. I don't know. Next time there's news. (laughs) (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.